Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing about the 5R cloud migration strategy. But before that, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload a video. Cloud migration is basically the transfer of an organization's IT resources from private servers and in-house data centers to a cloud-based infrastructure. This cloud-based infrastructure can be provided by a public cloud service provider such as AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. Some businesses choose only to migrate a portion of their IT resources such as the software or the database to a public cloud host while maintaining private cloud for their internal activities. But some others, they tend to migrate their whole system into a cloud platform. Now let's talk about the 5R model. So the 5R model was published by Gartner back in 2010. It defines the options that are available to migrate a specific application to the cloud. And the 5R strategy includes models such as rehost, replatform, refactor, rebuild, and replace. First, let's discuss about rehost. So Rehosting is also known as lift and shift. This is one of the most common approaches in cloud migration. Your applications, data, and servers are moved from on-premise to the infrastructure as a service layer of the cloud platform without major alterations. Here you continue to deal with the servers, networking, and per, ser uh, per server maintenance, only utilizing virtual machines and networking services of the cloud service provider, but you don't take full advantage of the cloud service provider here. The advantages of rehosting, the first and for first advan main advantage is that it is the cheapest and easiest way to migrate to the cloud as it contains minor configuration changes therefore it suits for organizations that are less familiar with cloud environments rehosting requires minimum time minimum expertise and reduces the risk of breaking anything by messing with your application's code no architecture charges or changes are required as it maintains a very high degree of compatibility with the on-premise infrastructure. Although rehosting is a comparatively simple approach, failures due to complex application dependencies or long outage period might occur. If a virtual server goes down, your application goes down, similar to the traditional server behavior. Now let's talk about the second method that is replatforming. Revising or replatforming is done when an organization's apps are incompatible with the cloud environment. Apart, therefore, you do a partial rewrite of the code base or optimization to revise the cloud environment's IAS or PAS after replatforming. So here, there are two things that you have to do. First, you replatform it, then you rehost it. The advantages of the replatform method is it allows you to improve a part of an application while the rest of the application remains operational in the cloud. It enables applications to take full advantage of the services available in the cloud while enhancing automation, improves application performance, security and scalability more than rehosting. When we talk about the disadvantages of replatforming, this may require higher expenses depending on the project scope such as the team size or the technical changes that are supposed to be changed, plus it's time consuming. This can also sometimes get out of hand because it can vary from deploying just a few small changes to the application or service up to a complete re-architecture of some components. Therefore, replatforming might involve risks such as errors in the code or configuration. You need to establish a thorough plan of which features you need to change beforehand and those changes should be very carefully implemented. Now let's talk about the third R, which is refactor. Sometimes legacy software is simply too old to run on, a, on the current cloud technology. So this will require a complete rewrite of the code. But remember that this is not a setback, but it's an opportunity for enterprises to update their apps using advantages and efficient cloud native capabilities that could likely be superior to the old environment. In this case, a platform as a service model is employed. The core architecture of the applications remain unchanged, but adjustments may be made to enable the better use of the cloud-based tools. 
So benefits of refactor includes the ability to take advantage of the cloud native capabilities, such as expanding the application's functionality, adding new features, improving performance, and many more. For the long-term perspective, refactored software is much more cost-effective than a non-refactored app. They are quick, reusable, and allow on-demand provisioning. Disadvantage is the cost, mainly the high initial cost, and it is this refactor is also time consuming compared to other approaches. New skills may be required when managing your application as well. Now let's talk discuss about the fourth R, which is rebuilding. So rebuilding is done by discard discarding the existing code base and replacing it with a new one. You can create your application directly in the cloud, taking advantage of the, all the tools that are available there. This process takes a lot of time and is only considered when companies decide that their existing solutions don't meet the current business needs. The main advantage here is being able to build an application from the ground up as this will enable you to utilize everything the cloud has to offer you. It's much easier to support and widen the app or service when it is being built in the cloud from scratch. The disadvantage is that it takes time and effort to get a new application off the ground. Rebuilding the app or service in the cloud may introduce new bugs the developers haven't encountered before. Therefore, the strategy is only explored when the current option is inadequate for business demands. Finally, let's talk about the fifth R, which is replacing. In replacing, the company doesn't redevelop its own native application from scratch, but instead, the company migrates to a third-party pre-built application provided by the vendor. The only thing that the company migrates from here is in the existing application is the data, while everything else about the system is new. Amount of work involved in the migration depends on the specific needs and possibilities of the actual data being moved. Some software as a service solutions can be moved smoothly, but you have find to always finalize the decisions after careful analysis because you're not just deciding on migration, but an optimization as well. The advantage of replacing is the speed of migration and the level of effort. You are simply replacing old software with the modern variant. Therefore, you are no longer you no longer need to incur development and maintenance cost. The disadvantage is if there are any dependencies, they can be hard to overcome. This is one of the different disadvantage because you need to invest in knowledge and people to use and administer the new solution. And remember that SaaS solutions are also at risk of vendor lock-in. That brings us to the end of the video on 5Rs cloud migration strategy. Whatever strategy you select, migrating to the cloud, compute, cloud computing requires careful preparation. It's also very important to choose a service provider partner who can actually meet your business needs. If you like the video, if you like the video, make sure to share it, subscribe to my channel and hit that like button as well.